Here's a scrap Philips television board. It's just not worth repairing. It came out of a, an old Philips TV. But this has got, well, I believe it to be the correct switch on it. So um, we're gonna remove this. That's the correct housing on it, I think. Should line up in the double pole. And obviously the switch works. So we're gonna take that out, as well as some other parts as well. Perhaps the line output transformer as well. I think that might be a matching pair for some of these um, Philips designed uh, color video monitors. So um, I'll, I'll take that out and uh, we'll see where we are with it. Just taking a look at the back of the PCB, the key eyed among you all will realize that actually there's far too many contacts on here, and that's because. Uh, this type of switch also does it it's a uh, it is double pole but there are two sets of the double pole which means it probably switch switches some low voltage thing doesn't matter it's not needed and i can chop that part of the switch off i'll show you what i mean once i take it out so pretty much um i'll desolder you don't need to see me desolder a switch do you i'll take the switch out and then we'll inspect it in person it should be fine. Perfect. Here we are then. I've taken the switch out. Actually, I was wrong about it being a, a two-section switch rather than, well, a four-pole, if that makes sense, type switch for a low-voltage side. Some of the Philips sets did have that, um, but this isn't one of those. So I've taken the switch out. I believe the spacing is the same. The mount, uh, that doesn't matter, we can take that off. I believe the one on, on the set is made out of metal, but it should fit. It is pretty fine. So I'm going to take the monitor apart now. And um, let's have a look at it. You can see I did a very good job at desoldering it. I'm very happy about that. I'll take the, I'll get the set apart and we can have a look. Here we are then, I've got the power supply board out and here's our switch. This one's gone up though. Um, I believe the button is in the front. Obviously hits, I don't know if you can see, there's a button at the front there and it just hits this plunger. But obviously this poor switch doesn't work no more. As you can see, it does everything here. So it, it has um, your DC volts going out and it has the uh, degaussing circuit here. Quite nice and there's a HT preset as well. Fantastic. I'll be adjusting that. Um, so the th first things first, let's take this old switch off. You can see it's pretty much exactly the same in terms of its layout. It doesn't matter too much that it's longer. You can see that the variations of this Philips monitor, some of them would go on a board, some of them wouldn't. This is one what would go in a board, but it should fit in pretty fine. So what I'll do is I'll take this old one off and put the new one on. Marvellous. Sorry everyone, uh, this video has kind of taken a bit of a tangent. I just wanted to talk about this new multimeter I've got recently. This is a very interesting British telecom meter. This is something, it's not too good for doing voltages really. You can just, you can test your AC up to 250 volts and I think DC up to 250. Nothing too interesting, nothing spectacular. But as you can do insulation resistance, um, there's a little oscillator in here which generates up to 150 volts, which means you can actually test the breakdown voltage of things like capacitors and things. So where I was using my old multimeter before, you could use something like this and it, it puts a higher voltage across it. Um, so you get more accurate readings on the resistance side of stuff. Telecom's engineer would use something like this to test uh, leakage to earth, if there was a short in the cable run, blah, 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 that type of thing. Oh, and the cable resistance as well, because you want it to be pretty much near the zero mark. Um, so the tangent, will be me making uh, probes for this because obviously I want to make use of it. So I need a couple of things. I need some, I think they're banana plugs or wonder leads or something. 
and I need to get some probes as well. Something I can use uh, a couple of different adapters. There was this thing that came with it, which I think is original, but the plug's broken off the end. So we're going to have to make that into something. Fine. So it has three terminals on here because you can actually test between Earth and the the two pairs of your telephone line using this switch depending on what mode you've set it to you can do reverse polarity uh, you can check between the a leg and earth for shorts b leg and earth for shorts or leakage that type of thing blah 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 doesn't really matter oh and also i think the same could be done with the mega ohms range it's all very exciting Anyway, right, so I'll get some tools, some parts and stuff that I need, and we'll get going on making these plugs. Right, so I've just sorted out some leads. I've got one that uh, made a crocodile clip lead, and I've also got a standard positive meter probe lead, which I've built up. Here we are then, checking the resistance of some of these uh, smoothing caps in the power supply. Right, let's go down to oh, Earth B. See, it's fluctuating, and that's because it's um, charging up that cap. It's going to go and check some of the um, parts of the other parts of the power supply now. So I've changed the switch. Um, I used one from an old 80 computer case. They work pretty well, to be honest. You just have to modify the screw holes. Anyway, so I sorted all of this out. I had originally wanted to use one of these. Um, this particular one. Let's just say that didn't go very well. I didn't ohm it out unfortunately and i assumed where the connections were um thankfully i had an rcd on the circuit i pretty much it, I, I thought i had shorted the uh the switch the more i look at it there's no possible way the switch is open circuit the fuse hasn't blown in the plug my 32 amp breaker tripped which is interesting it didn't blow the fuse in the plug and it's a free amp fuse anyway so i've put the new switch on and i have powered it on and the bloody bastard doesn't work anymore i don't have high voltage dc on uh, this cap here which is obviously not a good look to be fair there wasn't a bang there wasn't a pop there was nothing Nothing happened. Um, I wasn't shorting up against anything. This is not how I wanted to spend my evening, to be honest. Very frustrating, indeed. Righto, the power supply is back in operation. I won't go over what the fault was. It was something ridiculous, and I can't believe I, I missed it. But now, now we're having a problem where, for some reason... The EHT isn't starting, and I don't know if that's just me, but I don't think the tube is lighting up either. We should be able to see the tube lighting up. And we ain't. I'm unsure whether we're supposed to be getting... Um, if the supply for that is coming off the line output transformer... Uh, I'm not too sure. I can hear the frame time best. It's free running. Just been doing some voltage checks. I, I'm, I'm not too sure what's gone on. To be honest, it was working absolutely fine. This is a problematic piece of equipment. I think this calls for touching up cold solder joints, really. I, I, I don't know what else could have gone wrong. Um... The front light isn't coming on either. Um, so we're, mi we're missing things. We're missing voltages, which I have a feeling should be generated off the... So, uh, um, 
I'm just trying to think of an appropriate way to approach this. It was working, now it isn't. What could it be? Cold solar joints? I mean, I've been going through and checking these voltages. So this is, um, <clears throat> this voltage, about 120, and I think that might be a bit low. I think we're supposed to be getting 150 volts. You know, I might have just... There could be an adjustment that's gone. I mean, to be fair, the meter isn't... I haven't calibrated it yet. But if we look at the second pin... So there's three voltages coming into the set. Put this down to 50. <laughs> 25 but just under 25 volts. Again, don't trust the meter. Don't trust this meter. It's useless. I'll keep it on that setting and I'll measure what this pin is supposed to be, this third pin. Now on that we're getting about 12. But why am I not getting any voltage illuminating this tube? What's going on? This seems to think that we do have heater volts on this tube, so what's... Uh... We've got 12 volts. Oh, I don't know about that. Might be a bit too high. Maybe it is a 12 volt tube. How about that on this pin? 12 volts. Maybe it's a center tap? Because I'm reading in between. Um, let me just, I'm going to measure our G2. Um, that's almost non-existent. Okay. G1. There ain't nothing there, mate. Where's it gone? G3 is ground. Um... Something is on pin 11, though. I wonder what, oops, wonder what that is. That's uh, um, the equivalent of a first anode, but going to the tube. Fine. And that's where that is. I think the EHT generation is all low voltage. I mean, it could use the same HT feed. Um, I want to measure that heater volts, though. Something very odd's going on. Okay, so something odd. Measuring between the heater pins getting nothing no voltage nothing there mate either on ac or dc um so i don't really know what that's about to be honest the tube ain't broke i've not destroyed anything i reckon there's just a cold joint somewhere tackling this bastard issue i hate it absolutely hate it um I'm thinking if I could measure the line output transistor, see what the base voltage is, or collect and and the collector voltage. I can get away with measuring it on my meter. I think it might be a bit high. Well, that's not very good, is it? It doesn't fucking work. <laughs> it's supposed to be repairing things, not breaking them. You know what I did notice when um, when the guy dropped it off, we did have a problem. Where, if the power switch wasn't held, I, I don't quite understand, but if, I think there might be a cold joint. Because it, you'd have to hold the power button in a, in a certain way, otherwise the line output stage wouldn't start properly, or it, it would be arcing all over the place. I thought it was just, it was something irrelevant, but, um, oh, I don't know. I have to take that board out in a minute again. I'm so sick. This, these monitors are great to to work on, but um, they're great to work on because it's a single PCB. Blah blah blah. You know all of these things, but um, my God, they are. Then this particular variant isn't complex. I do, however, prefer the version where everything is on the. On the on the main board apart from the i think there's a variant where the mains transformer isn't 
on the main board. I can't quite remember. Perhaps I'm thinking about something else, but there's a variant of one of these that's far more sim simplified. Philips made loads of these things. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, I've got all the I've got all the um, manuals for these, and um, they're all as equally <clears throat> annoying to look through. Thankfully, this isn't too complicated. It doesn't need about six different voltages, unlike um, the American variant of this, I believe. So, I think what's uh, going to happen now, oh, this is going to be another multi-part video. I never seem to get those finished. <laughs> I had a loose fuse in the fuse holder, which is what was giving us the dead power supply. Very odd behaviour, to be honest. Now we've got a fault where there's no um, line flyback EHT. So uh, I'm going to try and figure out what's going on with that. Yeah, what I'll do is I'll have a break from this, relax for a while and then um, come back down, have a look at the main board, see if there's any cracked cold solder joints, clean all the, because they've got plug, plug and sockets on some things so i have to clean those and see what's up see what's going on hopefully it might just burst into life i don't know I, i'll inspect the board just in case there's any um broken traces right well i'll see you guys in a bit then right um gonna be a quick Kind of soldering thing that I'm doing. Sorry, I've set my tripod up in such an awkward angle, but um, it works. Anyway, before I wanted to start the soldering, I wanted to go over just um, some background history for basically just to explain what I've been doing and why I repaired this old stuff. I've had a fascination with vintage electronics for years, um, ever since I was a child. I'd take things apart put them back together though they wouldn't work again but uh you know it's an interesting concept um and i was fascinated by some things i absolutely love the idea of watching a vintage tv listening to vintage radio and the the idea of just bringing back something that's been sitting for years and years and years and years that just hasn't been used or has been disregarded and Yada yada yada. It's amazing. Um, and actually, that interest also, because it's vintage electronics, it goes on to computers and not just um, computers and televisions and all of that, any vintage electronics, even old lamp fittings, for Christ's sake, old switches and you know, all that nonsense. I've been doing this for so long. Um, I professionally started repairing stuff for people probably over five years ago now just over five years um and it's taught me a lot it's taught me a lot i've my workshop has grown over that time and i'm very thankful to have this space because if i hadn't i wouldn't be able to get anything done um i've got every part that i could ever want here i've got every piece of test equipment i could ever need every tool more or less you know it's fantastic got wire um i've got solder i've got I've, recently i i've even got these um i recently got these like solder not helping hands but soldering tools it's amazing you know you wouldn't think you'd want to use something like this sorry i just stood right in the way of the shot but you know this is for you to clean your pcbs make those shoulder pads uh, shoulder <laughs> make those solder pads nice and shiny Anyway, I'm going to start touching up a couple of these solder joints. Um, and you can have a watch, I suppose. Obviously, the most important thing is to get some flux. Um, I'm just going to spread this around. Just this bottom area first. We're going to do these controls. Uh, for my solder guide, I'm just using this ancient thing. This, I don't know if that's in the shot, sorry. Um, the tip is in perfect condition. 
it's in absolute perfect condition unfortunately i need to clean the um the body which has got somewhat dirty of recent months or recent weeks i suppose i also use this stuff which is a type of flux uh, general purpose flux i just use it to clean the solder guide and it's quite handy it works quite well like that i could use it on pcbs but then you um have the advantage of potentially accidentally damaging something or just corroding a contact or whatever so have to make sure you properly melt it down anyway i'll shut up and start soldering now I'll do the oven trick tonight. I'll clean the board up, clear all the flux off it. I'll clean all the plugs and the sockets. And I'll supp I suppose part two could be me continuing on with my tests, seeing if the board, if whatever the fault, the fault has cleared. Um, if it was bad solder joints, if not, then I'm going to have to get the old oscilloscope out, which I really don't want to do. Um, never mind. Cheerio, everyone. Thank you very much.